The Orville, Season 1. Now, if uh, you don't know, I'm a pretty big Star Trek fan. And I've been meaning to talk about this show for, on the channel for a while. Because I wanted to review Season 3 when it came out. And I didn't bother because I didn't have time to watch Season 1 and 2 and revisit it. Because if you don't know, the gap between Season 2 and 3 was ridiculous. Um, it fluctuated between Hulu and f actually being aired on Fox or FX or whatever. I can't remember which one. But yeah, it it was on the verge of cancellation and all this shit. And then the pandemic happened. It was a lot of bad things that happened to this show. And so when I was watching it, uh, season three come out on Hulu, I was like, they're going to cancel the show. But surprisingly enough, the show seems to be doing pretty well popularity wise it's got a line of comics it's got um it's got a uh it's got a pretty big fan base and they moved the show not just from hulu but to also disney plus where it's also been doing well so that's really interesting so if you like this show or you ha or if you haven't seen the show go watch it uh, if you like star trek because this show is created by seth mcfarlane which sounds like a science fiction sci-fi show in the vein of like next generation and stuff is probably not going to be good be to you know a show created by the guy who does family guy and and st shit like that but i'm not even saying like those shows are bad or whatever i enjoy them for what they are but it's just like oh that guy the guy who did ted one and two and a million ways to die in the west this guy but the thing is, Seth's passion for this stuff shines through. At several points throughout this show, I didn't feel like I was watching a, like, a knockoff Next Generation with a lame humor or whatever. I felt like I was actually watching real Next Generation episodes. Now, there's definitely some veins of Seth MacFarlane's humor. First of all, I guess we'll just get started with the negatives. His humor is always out of place within this show. Always. But it's not in the show enough. It actually shows quite a bit of restraint. And most of the episodes are allowed to breathe. And tell their, and tell their things. You know. Because you watch Family Guy. Even, uh, there was, even their emotional episodes. Have to have a joke in there. <laughs> you know. And it's just like. I get it. It's a comedy. But this show is also a comedy. But it knows when to let things breathe. And so even when a joke lands, I don't really care because it's not really interrupting what I like in the show, basically. Um, which is like what I like about Star Trek. This amazing crew of characters that you like watching. And, and, th th these incredible moments of writing and metaphors in science fiction. For, for instance, there's an episode about Boris. One of my favorite characters in the show. He has a child who was born a girl. And their entire alien species are all males. They're all dudes. And there and there's quite a bit of debates on this, on this episode of is females weaker than males and all that. And these things, all kinds of things within this episode. And it's really well written, smart, intelligent writing that 100% felt like Next Generation. Now, the first two episodes were kind of weak, but once you get to that third episode, and he's given birth by, by it in that one, that is where the show really picked up, and it got really good. And that's a great place to pick up episode three, because I feel like if you're not into a show by episode three, it's not a good sign. But yeah, it's a great. And then the other thing that doesn't work about this show, it's really just the love interest in the show. They, they have a conflict in the show where Seth's character catches her doing it with another alien dude who releases pheromones. And that was one of the worst episodes of the season with the pheromones and shit. It's just like... It was just bad. It was a bad episode. That was just... It, it's just really poorly written and a bad concept. And I don't like the idea of this girl... Who did decide to cheat on her husband. <laughs> or. Not, yeah husband. Because they constantly say divorce. I'm starting to remember. But. You know. Not really. Showing fault for what she did. I mean. She clearly shows regret. Or whatever. For things that she did. But. She should never really get back together with him. I would think. 
That's just for me, what I would prefer. But other than that, I like, the, the show is really well written. There's some amazing episodes. Again, uh, the born with Boris, debating on whether or not his child should be born female or not is a really great one. Um, the There's a couple different episodes about a cult planet. One where they they worship the main love interest girl and as a uh it's like basically like a jesus type figure they're like hey don't mess up or jesus is gonna come kill you um and then there's the one where uh they find this crew that's like it's kind of like the village basically where they're set in the past even though they're on a spaceship so yeah that that's that one uh, but yeah, there's some really great episodes in the show, and it's 100% worth watching. This is just the season one, I, so uh, I will be reviewing every single season. And then finally, when we do get the Orville season four, I also will be reviewing that. Um, if that ever comes out, I don't think that's ever been officially greenlit. I'd have to check, but I holy shit, I hope it's officially greenlit. Uh, 